Hello everybody, this is Abby Normal and welcome to Written the Sky. It's another visual novel I found on Steam, but this one uh, may maybe have to put a mature filter on it because apparently it contains nudity. I'm hoping it has <laughs> I'm hoping it has some things covered, because otherwise I'm gonna have to get an editor in. Cause uh Oh no! This ain't yo no. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna no guys. I love you all, but if you if you wanna see it, yeah, you're gonna have to play it yourself. Because this game's free on Steam, so, you know. <clears throat> ten minutes. Just ten more minutes. I eyed the clock anxiously, waiting for the moment every student in the classroom yearned for. Oh, just another ten minutes and I'll be free of this prison. A handful of other students followed my example, watching every second tick by as we awaited the end of another school day. Time seemed to slow down the closer we got. Our teacher's voice became more tired and drawn out, and every moment became agony, until at last... Ah, <sighs> alright class, that's it for today. Proving to be as unmotivated as the rest of us, our teacher concluded the lesson with no time to spare. I mean, time to spare. Early mark! Heck yeah! Please take down whatever notes you need for the... Azura, what are you doing? Before the teacher could finish speaking, I had stuffed my belongings into my school bag and jumped up from my seat. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, goodbye, Sensei. Aha, uh -huh. that was rude of me. How can I leave the classroom without saying goodbye to our teacher? Uh, Zura, that's not what I... Before Sensei could lecture me, I dashed out of the classroom with the kind of grace and elegance one would expect from an 80-year-old high school girl. Really now trying to chain me down to that boring classroom. What kind of life is that? Life is for living. I'll study when I'm dead. I skipped gleefully down the hallway, ignoring Sensei's aggravated shouts, and headed straight for the front entrance. As disheartening as it may sound, this is pretty much a normal day at school for me. Pay as little attention pay as little attention as possible, sneak out of class at every opportunity, then leave the second our teacher puts his chalk down. For someone serious about their studies, such a lifestyle would seem blasphemous. Conversely, anybody interested in club activities or spending time with their friends would consider it a waste. But not me. My only regret is that I can't leave the class any sooner or not attend to begin with. Because the truth is, I can't stand this place. Amen! School sucked. And for but anyone's like, oh, school's fine for me. Yeah, you need a day in my school. <sighs> what a day. I was asleep in class more often than I was awake, and I'm pretty sure I didn't learn a thing. Papa would be pissed if he knew. After returning home from school, I buried my head in my pillow, immediately reflecting on my actions. Though I had no problem leaving class early or skipping class, my father was another matter altogether. I shuddered at the thought of what my father might do if the school rang him. Uh, having an ace detective for a father isn't as much fun as everyone thinks. He has an innate ability to sense that when I'm hiding something from him, and his interrogations are never by the book. I'm no expert at getting lead on studies, but I'm pretty sure tickling me into submission is a violation of the Geneva Convention. As I sighed deeply over my own fate, I glanced. <laughs> Sorry, I just had this image in my head of a really burly, like, suspect being interrogated and he's just like, hold him down Derry, it's time for the tickle master to come in and they're just like tickling him and he's like, what are you doing? No! Ah, Alright, I'll talk! The drug! The dr where are the drugs? Tell me where the drugs are! He's just tickling him under his arms and he's just like, ah. I don't know why that means you so much. Uh, as I sighed deeply over my own fate, I glanced around the room for some way to kill the time before my father returned. Unfortunately, unlike most girls my age, I don't have any interest in fashion or TV dramas or, bo or boys or anything considered girly. Well, excuse you, TV dramas are amazing. Japanese ones are amazing in particular. Hana Yori Dango is my personal favourite. Worse, as easy as life would be if I were tomboy, I have no interest in sports or video games either. <gasps> Blasphemy! The only recreational activity I ever indulge in is the detective training my father has mandated since I was a little girl. Ugh, really, Papa? This is all your fault. What kind of father teaches his only daughter about useless junk like that? Oh, Papa. 
Even if I did want to become a de detective, he could have still least waited until I was out of diapers. <sighs> if only Mama was still here to keep him in line. My mother left us when I was still a toddler, shot by someone with a grudge against my father. So, she died. Her parents, my grandparents, offered to take me in, but my father stubbornly refused, insisting that he would take care of me. Unfortunately, his fatherly duty ended there. Always occupied with work, he left me at home alone on a daily basis, leaving me to more or less fend for myself. The only time we ever spent together was his mandatory detective training, or when I got in trouble at school. Needless to say, the latter became a habit. Uh, it's not that I have a problem with learning. If the subject is interesting, then I'm happy to pay full attention. But every day it's just the same boring, useless junk. Really, the way things are going, I'd be better off. I shook my head as negative thoughts began to cloud my mind. Living such an uneventful life, I often found myself thinking things I shouldn't. I contemplated leaving home, quitting school, or just doing something terrible so Papa would have no choice but to watch over me. Even though I knew such thoughts were bad, with a life as meaningless as mine, I had no reason not to think that way. After all, what is the point in living a life without meaning? Uh, an early mark from school, and how do I use it? I really need some excitement in my life. As darkness began to fall over the city, a solitary figure stalked the night. They walked up and down the street, looking for an artifact long forgotten. A valuable artifact of enormous value, exceeded only by its power. But no matter how long they searched, the artifact eluded them. Uh, not here either. I know it's around here somewhere. Many years had been spent tracking the valuable item down, but only now was the search reaching its conclusion. After so many hunters reached their demise, seeking the relic, only its true owner, the one person unable to use it, had proven capable. Uh, after so many years of searching, praying that nobody would beat me to it, I shall once again take possession of that which is rightfully mine. Tonight, I shall take to the stars once more. That outfit, damn girl. As another day passed, and as another day drearily passed me by, I found myself pacing around the house, waiting for my father's imminent return. I wasn't in a hurry to see him. In fact, if possible, I hoped to spend the night without facing his incessant question. But a part of me craved the interaction. Any FaceTime my father might offer, and I knew I'd have to face the music sooner or later. Ugh, jeez. I've been through this countless times, but facing Papa still makes me nervous. I guess there's a reason he's so good at his job. Playing nice cut won't always cut it. As I mauled those carefree thoughts, I could hear the sound of a key unlocking the front door. Oh, uh, welcome back, Papa! Uh, faced with my enthusiastic greeting, my father only stared at me silently. He pl oh no, he placed his coat and suitcase on the kitchen table, isn't this tired, I don't worry, sigh. It begins. Uh, how day it work? When is it not? My father turned to face me. Oh no. His voice sounded relaxed, but knowing my father, it was merely the calm before the storm. Of course, it would be easier if I didn't keep fielding phone calls from your school. Honestly, you snuck out of class again. What have I told you about disrespecting your teachers, huh? In a split second, he jumped from relaxed tone to interrogator mode. Hey, hey, it's not like that. Oh, then what is it like? That was already over. The bell was just about to ring. Yeah, well, you could just go to your room and think about what you've done. I, li I like to think he tells all the prisoners that as well. Go to your room! You've been punished! You <laughs> sold the drugs to these children. Go to your room. Papa? Now! Oh. Without putting up a fight, I headed straight to my room and slumped down on my bed. I had no desire to further enrage my father, and I knew that the longer we spoke, the more information he would extract from me. So if my sent sentence was to be a night cooped up in my room, then I'd be considering a light punishment. <sighs> that doesn't really matter. I already ate dinner before Papa came home, and I have nothing interesting to do anyway. Whether I'm in my bedroom, the living room, or the kitchen, doesn't change the fact that I'm bored out of my mind. Ah, the only upside to being sent to my room is... Don't you dare say masturbation. 
Oh, huh, oh sorry. I know how to sneak out. <laughs> Why did my mind go? Don't you dare say masturbation. Uh, and on that very awkward note, I'm going to leave this video here. If you liked it and you want to see more, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next part of Written in the Sky. Bye!